Hello everyone, I hope you are well. I'm going to talk about Edith Holden today. I used to do these videos on the channel where I would pick up an author that I have some books on my shelf that I've read like about three of their books and then I would talk about that author and then do book reviews on all the books that I have read from that author and just give you my overall opinions on that person because I'm not very adventurous with reading. <laughs> I realised from looking at my bookshelves today I, when I find a book that I love, I just read everything that author has ever written. And so my bookshelf are just categories of author's works and that's it. I'm not too adventurous. I would much rather read a book from an author that I love than start a new author's work. Just not the most adventurous reader out there. So on the channel I'm going to do loads more videos like this because I used to do them and I just stopped doing them where I just tell you about an author, why I love their books and then give you recommendations of their books. So I have three books here that are to do with Edith Holden. Edith Holden was born in 1871 and in her lifetime she was an illustrator of children's books. That's what she did, so she didn't write the books, other people would, and then she would illustrate them and she became very well known and successful and financially stable from being an illustrator. Her work is absolutely gorgeous. The only book that I have seen of her children's illustrations is this one, the, the only physical book, because I online you can see a lot of her illustrations, so I've seen a lot of them, but the only physical book that I have that she illustrated is The Hedgehog Feast, and it says it's by Edith Holden, but it's not. It's by Rowena Scott, but because she must have, she's more famous out of the two of them, they said it's by her. But Rowena actually wrote the story and Edith Holden did the absolutely stunning illustrations. This is a very bizarre story because the story is cute and lovely and it's about these hedgehogs. They're going about their business trying to get a feast together because all the other animals are coming for a feast. But then Edith has decided to draw animals killing animals. So you'll have like the lovely hedgehogs, they're stealing some apples from the house, and then you'll have like a bird pinning down a, a small animal just about to kill it and eat it. So it's like, oh, what do animals actually eat? Well, other animals. It's a little bit traumatizing. I don't think I would give this to a child in all honesty. I would have been, I was such a sensitive little child. I'm an only child, so I was of course very sensitive. I would have been traumatized if you would have given this book to me but the illustration is absolutely stunning love it i then have her most famous work which is the uh, the country diary of an edwardian lady and this is her actual diary that she illustrated and she talks about the changing seasons what plants are coming it coming in and what plants are leaving, wildlife, it is absolutely gorgeous and this was never intended to be published. So this was a personal work of hers that she never intended to be published and it's just so stunning and it's amazing how this was just her personal a personal diary and it's so beautiful, the detail, everything in it is just so beautifully done. It's gorgeous, it's so, oh, I can't even praise it enough, it's beautiful. And I have one of my favourite videos that I've ever filmed on this channel, is me reviewing this book. The video is about a minute long, and I went to my local park, and I'm sitting on a bench, and the birds are screaming over the top of me. So I'm on this bench, and I'm like, this is the country diary, and all you can hear is tweet, 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 from all these birds are screaming. I'll link that video down in the description, and my Russian dwarf of Hamster Freddy who he died a few years ago he is in the video as well so that's why that's one of my favorite videos because it's got Freddy in it as well and then I feel like it's shot well as but the sounds dreadful like the birds are they're in competition with me they're out screaming me throughout the whole video it's only a minute long I'll link it down below but I go into I show you pages from this book and I just think it's so stunning so beautiful and her love for nature will make you want to go out and like draw nature and really appreciate nature it's gorgeous i then after i had done that review video of the country diary of an Edwardian lady someone messaged me who subscribed to my channel and said do you want me to send you this book i really think you'd like it and it's a book that was written about edith holden so this is the edwardian lady and it's by Ina Taylor and this is a book all about Edith Holden's life and it is so beautiful and the person who sent it to me put a little card in it and I have still taped the card to the book because it's so lovely so thank you so much that person and this just goes fully into her life and her circumstance and everything to do with that and this book I highly recommend as well it's fabulous. Edith Holden's death 
is very mysterious, it's very odd. She drowned in the River Thames, but the, the situation around it is bizarre. So she married a man who was considered she married someone beneath her. He was an artist, he was a sculptor, and at that time, Edith Holden, she was considered like a spinster, she wasn't going to have any children, everyone just thought she was going to be by herself. And she had loads of friends, and in her book there's loads of postcards and letters between people, and it's lovely, she was very social. And then all of a sudden she met this man who was a sculptor and fell in love with him, and married him, and a lot of her family and friends stopped talking to her because of that. Because they said you're marrying beneath you, and obviously a woman at that time too, she was the breadwinner in that situation, she earned a lot more money than him, and so they thought it was very odd that the woman was earning more money than him and they really shunned her and shamed her for marrying what they considered was socially and economically below herself. So at the end of her life she didn't have a connection to a lot of her friends and family. So one day she went out and the, the story goes that she was getting chestnuts off a tree near the River Thames and she was using her heart umbrella to try and get the chestnuts and then she must have slipped in and the next morning her dead body was in the River Thames and that's it. But no one saw her. No one saw her getting the chestnuts. There were no witnesses of her going into the Thames. Absolutely nothing. And so the evening that she fell into the River Thames, her husband didn't tell the police that she was missing. It's not till the next morning that the police contacted him and said, we've got your wife's body here, I think it's your wife, and he went and it was his wife who was dead. And he actually got questioned over this because there was a kind of an investigation, an inquest into her death because it was odd circumstances and there were no witnesses of her going into the Thames. And he was questioned about why didn't you contact the police? When your wife didn't come home that evening, why didn't you contact the police to say your wife was missing? And he said, I assumed that she was staying at family and friends house that's it, but she hadn't told me, but I just assumed that she was out with someone. I didn't think anything bad had happened to her, I just thought she was out. But at that time, her friends and family, a lot of them had cut her off, so I don't understand where he thought she was going to be, but they just put it as an accidental drowning, but... Edith's family, who didn't like, you know, the man she decided to marry, they believed that she had committed suicide, that she was very upset at living with him and lonely because her family had disconnected themselves from her, that she would have committed suicide and that it was actually a suicide and she threw herself into the River Thames to drown. But the plot thickens because Dorothy, her friend who I think married her brother, Dorothy said no that couldn't have happened so the rumours started circulating that maybe it was suicide and Dorothy said no and Dorothy had letters of her, she, she came with the letters, she had letters of her and Edith where Edith was saying, because Edith was deep religious, she was saying that suicide is a terrible sin, you should be condemned if you commit suicide because she was religious. So Dorothy was saying like she wouldn't have committed suicide because she thought suicide was a sin. So she wouldn't have done it, even though Edith's family said they thought she committed suicide because she was so disconnected. But they had disconnected themselves from her. So I don't, I don't get it. And online people are just like, she just drowned, that's it. But then you go a little bit deeper and it's like there were all these other stuff and her family thinks she killed herself. And f like her husband doesn't say anything. We don't know what he believed. He kind of went into exile after that and no one saw him. What happened? What He got her money, so what did he do with her money? What is that situation about? I feel like there's so many different possibilities. She could have either committed suicide because she was in a really dark place because everyone had shunned her because she'd chosen to marry a man for love, not for money. Or she could have been in a really bad situation with him because surely if she was going away to stay at friends and family, she would have told him where she was going. But maybe they weren't speaking at that time. Maybe they'd had an argument. So he thought, oh, she's just gone to stay with family because we've had this huge argument. And maybe she realised the fairy tale wasn't the fairy tale. Everyone was right. I shouldn't have married him. Also, the thing with this is we don't know whether they liked him or not. It might not have been that they just are bad and they didn't like that she'd married beneath herself. It might have been that he was really rude to them and they didn't like her. And we only have the letters that she kept. There may have been many letters that she burnt and her possessions went into his, her, his custody, her husband's custody, after she died. So she might have had a letter from her family who said, we think he's terrible because he's done all this stuff. And he might have destroyed that letter. So because you can't ask any of the people who were alive at the time, I feel like it's very difficult, but it leads to a, so much mystery. I think she could have accidentally slipped in. 
I think 100% she could have done that but there were no witnesses so you can't say for sure and then he didn't she didn't come home that night and he didn't think that was weird why were they having marital differences don't I'm such a sleuth like I by nature am so nosy like anything's going on outside I'm at the windows I am just too nosy <laughs> so for me this mystery is so bizarre but I do find it sad that she after her death her friends and family said they hadn't seen her for such a long time. They were shocked when she died and they hadn't seen her. They hadn't got to say goodbye to her. She was 48 when she died. And they didn't get to be with her because of this whole shunning, because of who she married, which this situation happened with Beatrix Potter as well. Beatrix Potter was very wealthy at the time. She'd made up her money with her books and she was living by herself. She was a spinster. Everyone thought she was just gonna die by herself. That's it. And then all of a sudden she married a solicitor and her brother stuck by her because Beatrix Potter and her brother were very close and her brother's wife and he was fine with it but the rest of her family, her extended family and some of her friends shunned her because they said she was marrying beneath her and I think they were a bit like I don't see the point of her getting married because she's not going to have children with him why is she getting married to someone who's below her she's going to have to look after him but in both instances like with Edith she married a sculptor who he was working Beatrix Potter married a solicitor it's not like men married them and then quit work and didn't do anything they married men who had professions but they they just weren't making the same amount of money that the women were so people thought that was like bad for the women to be the breadwinner in that situation I just find it so odd Edith Holden's drowning it's very tragic it's very odd but even though it's got nothing to do with her books I thought it was interesting because it is in this book here which is The Edwardian Lady by Ina Taylor and in the back it has um, her death certificate and it has the transcript, transcript, <laughs> transcript from her inquest into her death so it's interesting that bit and then it has the side of her family who really did think it was a suicide that happened to her so it's interesting whereas this book it's it's interesting at how she formed her career how she formed her love of art and then it's got really early things that she did right up to later things and then loads of illustrations from books that she illustrated so those are the children's books that I don't have that she illustrated their illustrations are in this so this book is so worth your money if you can get hold of it at all it might be on eBay or something like that it's a really fabulous book and obviously the country diary of an Awardian lady is amazing it's so good it's one of those books that is like once in a lifetime good that like you couldn't recreate a book like this it's just so authentic and you just know that she didn't think anyone was gonna read it she didn't know anyone was going to have any kind of access to it so she's just talking about her love of nature and the seasons and everything to do with it and it's not a personal diary so she doesn't talk about going to see her friends she might say oh i've gone to this county because i'm seeing a friend but she doesn't talk about her emotions or anything to do with that it's just to do with nature and her connection to it and i think it's beautiful so that is my chat about Edith Holden I love her if you can get your hands on any of her illustrations get them because a lot of them are out of print the books that she illustrated her illustrated versions are out of print so if you can get those books at all on eBay or charity shops secondhand then definitely get them because her illustrations are just beautiful absolutely stunning so I'm going to end it here I will be doing more videos in this format where I just sit down pick up <laughs> just looking at my shelf I've got Jodie Pickard I've got three books Anne Cassidy I've got six books Alice Walker I've got five books <laughs> just find authors that I like and then that's it and I'm like should I try something from a new author no wait a minute I can just read a Tracy Chevalier <laughs> should I try a new author no wait a minute I've got Mary Shelley's short story collection up there now I'll just stick to what I know that's it should I try I always think should I try new crime authors but I'm like I love Agatha Christie I feel like she's the queen of crime like everything just kind of fails in comparison because her storylines are so so unique and they're just what I I like I love that kind of style of when it's crime but it's not too gruesome it's not like people torturing each other there is a crime in it but then it's more about the characters around and a murder mystery oh I'm gonna stop chatting now but I hope you enjoyed this video tell me if you have read anything about Edith Holden if you have any of her illustrations tell me let me know and I will see you again soon for another video